Hey guys, today I'm going to go ahead and talk about how to set up integrated Windows authentication in your environment. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start off by saying you can always find this information on our, the WebSense support site. Um, just going to support and uh, it'll bring you to this page right here and type in integrated Windows authentication and it actually pops up. Just select it right there and hit search, just like you would any Google search. And immediately I get a ton of results on integrated Windows authentication. And I can go ahead and even narrow this down a bit further to my specific product and my specific version. And immediately I have a lot of information at my fingertips that I can use to help me configure this. So just a heads up, you know, always check our, uh, our Windows our, our WebSense support site. It's very helpful um, and you can usually get uh, a lot of your questions answered by uh, going to this um, particular site first. Also, something that I know not a lot of people like to use but it is actually very helpful as well is the help button. Um, our help button is very unique in, in that it, uh, it sees what page you're currently on and will adapt its contents to the uh, page that you're currently on. So please utilize that help button as much as you can and um, and you'll be able to find a lot of information based on that and you can see here's integrated Windows authentication right here and I can click on this link it'll take me right to instructions on how to configure that and explaining all the ins and outs of it so with that said um, let's go ahead and start off with uh, just kind of an overview um, integrated Windows Authentication uh, is an authentication method that WebSense Content Gateways can use to identify and authenticate users um, utilizing their Kerberos tickets. So the integrated um, PKI that Windows natively uses on its own. This is very useful um, in accurately identifying users and not having to uh, prompt users for authentication in any instances. I am currently on version 7.8.4 um, and my environment is running um, on a full Windows domain environment and my uh, content gateway and basically my entire proxy is running on a WebSense v10000 appliance. So with that said, um, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to go over is some preliminary configurations that need to be made before configuring integrated Windows authentication in your environment. Um, these are very simple to do, um, but they are necessary, so please pay attention. So my first step is logging into my content gateway. Um, that can be easily done by just going to the address of your appliance and you will get an option to log into the appliance manager or the content gateway. Select the content gateway and it will bring you here. Once you are in the content gateway, um, make sure on this configure basic page that the proxy name is filled in with the host name of the proxy. Also, make sure that your DNS has forward and reverse entries for the host name of the content gateway as well. That's very important for utilizing integrated Windows authentication. With that said, I'm going to go ahead and bring over an example browser because there's also another configuration that needs to be made in your browsers in your environment. Um, I'm showing this on um, IE. That is the only browser that we really officially um, have documentation on or support in configuring um, uh, IWA or trusted sites in for Firefox and Chrome. Um, generally you'll be able to figure out where this particular setting is if it's even needed but um, those will have to be looked up kind of on your own and and uh, figure out you'll have to figure out how to configure those specifically. But um, if you go into your internet options and you go to security, local intranet sites, sites, and advanced you can see I have inserted in there the host name of my content gateway and it's prefixed with HTTP colon slash slash. You want to make sure that's in there when you insert the name. Um, this is, can be done via group policy within your environment. Um, usually your Active Directory administrators 
will be the ones to configure the setting and push this out to all the users in your environment. But this must be done before um, IWA can be configured. I believe that Chrome um, utilizes the uh, Internet Explorer um, configuration options. So I believe Chrome and Internet Explorer should work OK um, without any uh, extra configuration. And I think Firefox is fairly similar, but that can be looked up online as well to kind of see how to set that up um, in a similar way to setting up trusted sites in IE. As always, I recommend um, you always have a way to manage the browsers within your environment via GPO. Both Chrome and Firefox have plugins available for Active Directory that allow for group policy management of those two browser types. Okay, so once those settings are configured, we can actually go ahead and start configuring integrated Windows authentication in our content gateways. Um, this is a fairly simple configuration, and uh, you'll see it doesn't take much time at all. So first we'll go ahead under Configure and Basic. If we scroll down a bit, we can see we have a authentication section here, and right now it's it's a checkbox on none. So I want to go ahead and check integrated Windows authentication as the method to use to authenticate my users. Um, a little more information on integrated Windows authentication while um, I apply this setting. So I'll go ahead and click apply and it's going to ask me to restart the content gateway. I'll do that. So a little more information on, on IWA. Um, it can be used in conjunction with DC agent um, and that's uh, actually recommended if you already have DC Agent set up in your environment. There's no need to disable DC Agent or take it down. Um, essentially, DC Agent will act as a backup for IWA um, in the case that for whatever reason IWA is not able to identify end users in your environment. This can be very useful if there happens to be any complications um, within the PKI within your environment and you have to for whatever reason. Um, disable IWA. Alright, so I can see that once I restarted it, I have this alarm that's pending, and I also have this configure option that popped up. So if I click on the alarm, I can see that it lets me know that uh, Windows authentication is enabled, but it's not joined to a domain, and it gives me the exact path to go to to actually join it to a domain. So knowing that, I'm going to go ahead and clear it. And go back to the summary page. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, go back to configure basic. And under there, like I said earlier, you can see we checked it and now this configure option is set up. So I'll go ahead and click configure. Now I want to go ahead and put in some of my uh, um, information to join my content gateway to the domain. Um, the content gateway essentially joins the domain like any Windows server would. Um, this allows it to uh, be part of your internal PKI and have visibility into the end users Kerberos tickets that um, attempt to access the internet through this gateway. So first I'm going to go ahead and enter in the name of my domain which is rustalab.com an administrator name in my environment utilize the same service account for all of my WebSense services and I'm going to go ahead and specify the domain controller I want to use. Um, we usually always recommend specifying the domain controller um, by IP address um, or by the host name. Um, the auto detect feature is great if you're only utilizing the content gateway or the proxies in a smaller environment where you may you maybe only have um, a few domain controllers located in the same um, office building or, or same region. So I'm going to go ahead and okay. And the content gateway host name. Um, just make sure that this is populated. And once this is done, I'm going to go ahead and click Join Domain. And I don't want to remember that. So let's see what happens. Okay, so you can see it looks like it successfully joined the domain. Um, and now it's asking me to restart the content gateway. So I can go ahead and go to 
my proxy basic and restart. Okay, the gateway is finished restarting. Let's go ahead and go back to configure, security, access control, and integrated Windows authentication. So if we look at that, we can see my domain is joined. Um, we can see the domain controller connections that have been made over the, um, the ports that it's been made through, the status of the connections, and the process ID name of the connection itself. So this just kind of gives a little summary on the, the domain controller that it's been joined to. Um, once again, if you have um, various regions um, that have multiple domain controllers in them, sometimes the best step to take when configuring the domain controller name in here is to literally create a, um, a C name that correlates to several domain controllers within your environment. That way you have the ability to round robin among several domain controllers because natively this does not do any kind of load balancing if you were to enter more than one domain controller in here, um, which you can. You just have to enter them separated by commas. But what that allows for is just failover. So if this first domain controller were to fail, it would fall back to the next one in the list and the next one. Um, so for larger environments, um, if you have a couple of, uh, of domain or domain controllers, I would recommend, like I said, configuring using DNS um, a round robin host name that you can use so it pings all of them when it's uh, um, when the users are authenticating against them. So we go ahead and go to global authentication options now. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, explain some of these or just explain some best practices. So fail open. Um, generally, I, I usually always recommend uh, enable for all authentication failures. I say that because what this allows is if for any reason um, some kind of network failure or um, just an authentication um, failure, you know, packet trans retransmission, something goes wrong, um, this is going to allow the user to at least still browse, but they'll just get the default policy if they cannot be identified. So this is a good feature to have enable for all authentication failures caching method. Um, I would leave this as is. Um, you want to use the cache using cookies only. Uh, if this uh, content gateway is authenticating users that are within some kind of shared hosted environment, like a Citrix environment. Um, now let's say that you have a few Citrix um, servers in your environment, but the content gateway is, is basically the proxy for all of your users that are on their own host machines as well as those Citrix um, servers. What you would do is you'd put cache using both IP address and cookies and then you can specify the IPs of your Citrix servers here. What this allows is for each of those users in those shared um, user environments or multi-host environments like that Citrix environment, you, it allows for each of those users to be identified individually as well rather than everything looking like it's coming from that one IP address of that Citrix machine. Um, the rest I would actually leave um, uh, default. This redirect hostname, please make sure this also has the hostname of your content gateway in it as well. And with that said, um, that is really about it. There's not much more to configuring integrated Windows authentication in the environment. You can now go ahead and test your users um, by just browsing through the content gateway or the proxy and making sure it's identifying them by username by watching them in real time monitor. Um, that's a great way to kind of test out and make sure authentication is functioning properly. As always, I want to thank you for watching and I hope this tutorial was helpful.